नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रष्टाय भूतले श्रीमत भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिने निर्विशेषा शून्यवारी पस्कतियादेशतारिने श्रीकृष्णचैतन्ना प्रभुनित्यानंदा श्रीअर्मेतागराधरा शिवाशरीगो Please, everyone, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare everyone Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare One last time everyone please Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Before starting I wish to say how greatly happy I am uh, to participate in this online presentation. I was very, very um, moved by Buri Jam Prabhu's presentation about how Krishna is always there and is examining us and uh, um, his hints um, that help us to pass the test of Krishna and get this great reward of bhakti that is love into our heart that uh, these hints were very helpful and uh, these videos which I'm seeing I really of course I cannot compare I, I'm not so informed about what goes on in the visual arts but they are uh, really a uh, a genre of videos. I think you create meditative, uh, contemplative videos which have a great uh, impact on the heart. So, yes, I'm very honored to be part of this. I feel very much <laughs> being at the site of Giriraj by the vision, by the visuals in the computer, but also in the back. You can see. Mm. Goparaj, mm. let me see how to, yes, here, yes, oops, here's Goparaj on this side, uh, lifting the Giriraj hill uh, with his pinky of the left hand, and then next to him, just in my back, you find Vrinda Devi, who is one of the uh, guardians, the threshold. Uh, guardian to Brindavan Dam. I will be sharing with you in three lectures some excerpts 
of uh, uh, the last work of Srila Rupa Goswami called Utkalika Balari, which belonged to a certain composition of poetry. It's called Urtgirna. Uh, these are po poems or writings which come deep from the heart of a, a self-realized soul and then are expressed uh, through his speech and brought outside. Mm. Uh, Rupa Goswami writes at the beginning of his composition that he had kept, had tried to keep these uh, uh, secrets of his own bhajan uh, for a long time hidden, but due to the pressure, uh, due to the intensity of their emotion, he now will reveal them, they will come out. Uh, I like to think of it in an uh, image of, that is used for Raghunathas Goswami's poetry. That's the image of the uh, volcano. His heart is the inner um, uh, place of the volcano and then his writings and expressions are the lava, so to say, which uh, comes out and rolls down the hills. Why are such compositions important for us as ordinary, uh, let me say not ordinary, but as uh, devotees who are just approaching these higher states of Krishna consciousness? Mm, why are they even relevant? The answer to this question is that if uh, you come in contact with them, uh, your heart uh, becomes affected. In fact, Baladev Vidya Bhushana um, uh, says your heart melts. It's almost as if you put iron into the lava that comes out of the heart of the volcano. Mm, then the iron, the cold and stiff iron, uh, which is in contact with this, um, becomes uh, um, warmed up and then finally uh, glows. Th this is the whole idea of Vaishnava practices. We come in contact with uh, something which is imbued with spiritual shakti and within the contact with this uh, we become transformed. Mm. The best example is chanting the holy names. The holy names are uh, purely spiritual and if we are uh, in contact with them, especially when we don't have any, anything between us and the holy name like apparatus, anything which removes us from the holy name, then yes, as Bhuri Prabhu quoted from the Antya Leela, mm, then uh, this is the quickest mm, way to obtain love of Godhead. Good, so uh, let's dive right into the work. Uh, we find Rupa Goswami uh, in the forest of Vindavan uh, crying. He is expressing a desire. He feels he has for so long practiced Krishna consciousness, but the ultimate uh, uh, goal that is the personal service of Radha and Krishna has not yet been given to him. So he turns, um, he, he says, I, I have this desire to serve Radha and Krishna. And he says, I think it will be fulfilled because no one who went to Vrindavan uh, had ever experienced that his desires were not fulfilled. Maybe we remember in this regard how Lord Nityananda appeared to Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and he said, Ari Ari Krishna Das, <laughs> oh Krishna Das, go to Vrindavan because in the sacred land of Vindavan, 
all your desires will be fulfilled. So Rupa Goswami says, I'm here in Vrindavan. I have these desires uh, and I'm sure they will be uh, fulfilled by the power of Vrindavan Dham. Then he turns to uh, Vrinda Devi, to Lasi Devi. Oops, <laughs> how to, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little inexperienced. Yes, like this. Here is Vrinda Devi behind us. Uh, uh, we turn as Vaishnavas to this divine goddess, Vrinda Devi, uh, for, to allow us uh, to have residence in Vrindavan. And then Nayane Hiribo uh, Sada, that we see with our Nayans, with our eyes, the divine couple that we sing in our Tulsi prayers. Mm, Rupa Goswami does not stop there. He turns to all the associates. He says, my dear associates of Radha and Krishna, you roam with the divine couple through the land of Vrindavan. Please, please, uh, you are always together with uh, Radha and Krishna. Please introduce me to the divine couple. And then he says, O oh, couple, <clears throat> Hanta Santa Karuna Shudajari, <clears throat> you have lake like hearts which are filled with the rivers of sweet mercy. We have here in the area where I live near Berlin. 1,400 lakes, <laughs> and from some of these lakes, rivers emanate. So this is the image which we have here. You have lake-like hearts that are full of condensed rivers of sweet mercy. Be kind to this wicked person and give him abundant amounts of love in his heart which are the guarantee of seeing you. Mm. Now, why does Rupa Goswami want to see uh, uh, Radha and K Krishna? Mm. In Krishna consciousness, we here don't try to see Krishna, mm. try to qualify so that the divine couple Sorry, 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 winter time in Germany. <laughs> I try to qualify, act in such a way that the divine couple sees uh, you. I will ad address this point of seeing Radha and Krishna or not seeing them a little later with some very interesting quotes from our Shastras. So why does he want to see them? This is very important to understand the heart of uh, Rupa Goswami. He wants to see them in order to serve them. What do you do when you stand before God? You only have one question. How can I serve you? Prabodhananda Saraswati describes this in one of his works, the Sangita Madhava. He describes a soul who comes from the material world into the forest of Vrindavan and in the distance hears sweet songs and as he comes close he finds the associates of Radha and Krishna, the gopis, uh, singing and talking about Radha and Krishna. And he, he, he goes to them and says, How can, please, you are the servants of Radha and Krishna, please help me to uh, uh, meet the divine couple. And the gopis arrange such a meeting, and then for the first time, the soul comes before Radha and Krishna. And it's a big, 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 big. Um, uh, let us say, a very moving encounter. 
first, and they are so so extraordinary, uh, sweet and beautiful that he cannot really fathom it with his heart. But then when he composes himself, he asks, how can I sing for you? How can I serve you? Please give me these directions. This is natural. This comes from the soul. <clears throat> Today I would like to go with you through a uh, uh, verse uh, 31 in Utkalika Valari. This was just a little introduction uh, where I will really go through the, uh, 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 through the direct translation and through what, it, what Rupa Goswami uh, expresses. I, I have to <laughs> request all of you to shower your good wishes on me. We are all now uh, um, a group of participants in, in, the, in the sacred effort to hear about Radha and Krishna. So here's the verse for you. Pradeshinim muka kuhare vinikshipan jano muhuvan abud vipukatkaro prasidatam kshanam adipo prasidatam drisho puras puratu tadit ganachavi. I'm placing my forefinger into my mouth. And I call for you in the forest constantly. O oh my Lord, O oh my mistress, for a moment be merciful, be merciful. May your beauty of lightning and a cloud be visible to my eyes. So uh, Rupa Goswami says it seems to be impossible for me to have the fortune of your direct and close uh, contact. But I desire so much to have you only that I, meet, uh, that I want to meet you from far off. And this is how he makes his request known. This person places his index finger in the hole of his mouth. I'm persisting in my request. I cry, I cry constantly here in the forest of Vrindavan for you. Be merciful to me. Please hear me. Be merciful to me. And let your sweet forms that shine like a streak of lightning in a dark rain cloud just one time manifest before my eyes. This gesture, we don't know it in, in the non-Indian countries, uh, in, uh, is a gesture of intense keenness. A beggar would, would do, do this. Mm. Uh, it means I'm like a calf and I long to drink from the from the udder of the cow. Mm. Mm. Calves can be very thirsty and very insistent and very persistent. I am here in this forest of Vindavan and I know if a desire is placed in Vindavan where so many wish-fulfilling Kalpa Vriksha trees are, then this is, desire is bound to be fulfilled. There are amazing uh, narrations of people who come to Vrindavan, they desire something and immediately it is fulfilled. Like even modern examples, like in my own life, mm, uh, as someone who has a lot of projects going on, I, I, just, I sometimes 
think I should meet this person or that person and that person. And sometimes I'm thinking impossible uh, uh, persons, impossible in the sense that they are not in Vindavan, they are in America or Canada or so. It's impossible that I meet them. But very often I have seen that I'm going around Govardhan and suddenly, boom, the person I need to meet to discuss something uh, in, in person is, is just coming out of, out of the path, you know, as if he has been sent there. These are small things, but uh, those who have been in the land of Vindavan have seen also spiritual desires becoming uh, fulfilled instantly because it's an atmosphere where there are trees. Uh, therefore, you must be very careful with your consciousness in Vindavan, not that you have uh, the uh, unsubstantial uh, surface desires going on, but that you are focused on the real ones. The, uh, so, so mm, mm, uh, uh, but Rupa Goswami also feels, if I so much want a close contact, that's a really a, a very bold desire. Uh, so I don't dare to ask for this. Let me see you from af afar. And he invokes an image, just like someone may stand somewhere and see a cloud from which a, a lightning flash comes down. Huh? I want to see you. Radha, you are like the lightning. You are, have a golden effulgence, just like the lightning. And Krishna, you are like a dark uh, cloud. Uh, so this is how I want to see you. When we as sadhakas discuss the extraordinary mood and uh, desires of such perfected souls as uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, uh, light is shed onto our own path and we become aware of these original desires that are there in the soul. Our time also in in, in spiritual movements suffer from uh, the loss of the soul uh, or the loss of the self. But when you ignore the soul and its desires, it doesn't mean they go away. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, ignoring these spiritual desires to be close to Krishna and serve him they, they are anchored in the soul. They don't go away even if we ignore them and never think of them. But uh, if we uh, repress them, suppress them, neglect them, they will make themselves known in a feeling of emptiness, of voidness, of uh, unfulfillment with what with how we live our lives. Mm, we have in our heart this <laughs> God-shaped vacuum and it can only be closed with God. <laughs> uh, so, so therefore, when we hear uh, such uh, tremendous uh, outpouring of, of, of desires, we become reminded of these desires. For some of us, it is, uh, we are jolted, <coughs> thrown, catapulted out of our ordinary thoughts and our desires, and we have to confront mm, uh, our uh, absent-mindedness and our being so much covered in our lives. See, the tendency, the great temptation of our times, and it is we in a spiritual movement are no exception. The temptation is to deal with the symptoms of, of having lost contact with our soul and its 
the spiritual aspirations, mm, that, that these mm, symptoms of like uh, the subsequent emptiness and the subsequent feeling of not being fulfilled, that we deal with them separately. Oh yes, we deal with our emptiness, with our lack of fulfillment uh, separately, or we d with our frustrations. We deal with them separately. We deal with the inability to enter fulfilling relationships separately. We deal with the frustrations which happen in relationships separately. But uh, unless we come to the mm, root cause of our malady, uh, that is not being in contact with the soul and its spiritual desires for uh, darshan and for serving Krishna, we, we will remain unfulfilled and one mm, problem will be exchanged with another problem. Uh, with the same result that we feel empty uh, and, and not, uh, not in bliss, not in ecstasy and so on. So Rupa Goswami's uh, keen desires light mm, uh, our own path and we mm, will start to feel uh, a transformation in our hearts where we uh, then want the association and the service of, of Krishna. This love, which also Burijan Prabhu talked about, this Krishna-centered love, has uh, two symptoms. We speak now about spiritual de desires. Huh? It's a deep thirst for the beloved. Mm. Uh, this means the intense and pure desire to make the Lord happy with our service. And the marginal quality of this love is complete absorption in God consciousness. Mm, this is discussed by Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 to 272. This love is not formal. It is spontaneous because it wells forth, it comes forth from, from the soul. Jiva Goswami speaks about this love in an analogy. Analogy, analogy is mm, you take something which, with, with, with which you are familiar in this world and through this example which the analogy gives you, an, 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 you are becoming mm, aware of that which you are not familiar with. Mm, in Sanskrit logic, mm, this is called uh, Chandra Sakanaya. Uh, that is the logic of seeing the moon through the branch of a tree. <laughs> Imagine someone doesn't see the moon going through a dark night and then he asks his friend, where is the moon? Is there the moon here? And the friend will say, yes, look there in the tree, the third branch, between the third and the fourth branch, uh, look there. And then he looks there and, be, and he sees the moon. Of course the moon is not between the third and fourth branch, but by pointing out to something which uh, the person can see first, he can then uh, hopefully see uh, what is unknown to him. So Jiva Goswami gives an analogy. Just as the eye is naturally attracted to seeing beautiful objects uh, and does not need any encouragement, <laughs> In his attraction, the devotee is naturally attracted to the Lord. Such a thirsty, eager love is called raga, and devotees with such natural love are called ragatmika bhaktas. Mm -hmm. So the love of Godhead 
about which we are speaking is as uh, spontaneous as the love which um, you and me feel when we see a beautiful object. I, I can imagine no one needs to be encouraged to appreciate the beauty of Goparaj here in the background. Uh, isn't he beautiful and uh, his smile is, uh, especially the glance of his eyes is, uh, is very nice. Especially when you sit here, he's looking at me <laughs> and uh, checking me if I'm doing, uh, saying everything properly. <laughs> so um, our eyes don't have to be encouraged to, to, to look there, like we may go through a wonderful a path at the Adriatic coast and all of a sudden our eyes see an island which is covered with beautiful trees in the Adri Adriatic Sea and we see a, a, a herd of dolphins rising out of the Adriatic Sea and playing around. No one has to say, just, just, just look there, don't look here. Everyone's eyes go like, wow! Uh, because they are attracted. So the same uh, natural encouragement, uh, sorry, uh, attraction, which doesn't need any encouragement, which is, is there f uh, in the souls, who, in the pure souls who, have, who are together with uh, Krishna. And when we hear their descriptions, their Ut Girna, their outpourings, uh, we become highly, highly uh, attracted. And, and Rupa Goswami gives us here an, an, an image. He says, Radha, you are like a lightning who sits on the lap of the black cloud um, called Syam Sunda or Ganash, Ganashyam. Mm -hmm. And I see, see you from the distance and I feel so attracted. This is uh, the desire in my heart. This is the vision I wish to see. Um, and uh, uh, good. I would like to now raise a cr critical question. Mm. Should we desire to see Krishna? In the first canto of the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says, there are so many different speculations and concepts about Krishna. But as soon as the Krishna son arises within the heart, the darkness of material uh, speculations is at once cleared off. One sees his master and fully engages in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Mm. My dear devotees, at the moment what we hear about Krishna is a concept only. It's a concept which our material mind has. It's something which is not yet realized. It's a mental uh, composition which is there. Only the moment you see Krishna, then uh, the concepts are broken and you will see, wow, he is very, very wonderful. Prabhupada once was asked by one of my god brothers, Prabhupada, how does Krishna really look like? <laughs> and then Prabhupada pointed towards an image of Krishna. Uh, it was in Mayapur where there was a carving of Krishna, beautiful carving of Krishna, made from teak wood uh, in his room. And he said, like this. And then he added, and when you see him, <laughs> he will actually look completely different. Our eyes, our mind cannot understand Krishna. Atashi Krishna Namadi. 
um, but Krishna becomes revealed to us. Uh, out of his own accord, he reveals himself. If we become inclined to do his service. Therefore, the devotee never says, I want to see you, Krishna. He says, I want to serve you, Krishna. And uh, that implies the closeness with Krishna and so on. Mm. So should we desire to see Krishna? Yes, by all means, because as soon as the Krishna sun arises in your heart, the darkness of the material concepts or speculations are cleared off. Jiva Goswami says the desire to see Krishna is the qualification of seeing him. If you always hear, no, don't see Krishna, don't see Krishna. Oh, okay, I, I don't want to see Krishna, I don't want to see Krishna. Then you will never see Krishna. <laughs> when you always hear, uh, you are too unadvanced, uh, you should not desire to love Krishna. That is not up on your level. You will never, never desire to see Krishna. You have to develop your divine aspirations, which are slumbering, which are connected to the true self, and so on. The example which uh, uh, Jiva Goswami gives is Narada Muni. He had once uh, Krishna's darshan, as you know, he went through the forest and he then um, sat down under a banyan tree and meditated with his mantra about K Krishna. And then for a kshanam, a moment, he saw the beautiful um, form of Krishna as a spurti, that is a, a, a short revelation in the heart. I think you all have sometimes, for a short time, you read something about Krishna, you heard something about Krishna, you had the darshan of the deity of Krishna. And for a short time, that image came into your heart and you saw, and then it was gone already, and so on. So Narada Muni had once a darshan, and Krishna told him, I regret that during this lifetime this will be the only darshan of me. But it was still very helpful that you had it because now you have an eagerness and this eagerness mm, will wipe all the material contamination away from your heart and it is uh, this eagerness for wanting to see me, uh, uh, that will give rise to my darshan. Uh, so uh, first Krishna comes in the heart as a momentary impression, a spurti. Maybe sometimes he comes in a dream also. It's like this. And then the second revelation is Krishna can be seen with the spiritualized eye. Narada Muni said, from this moment on, whenever I chanted, the Lord appears on the lotus of my heart as if called for. Um, uh, in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sanatan Goswami answers the question, should we want to see Krishna? He says, by all methods of spiritual discipline, seeing the Lord in person is the true reward to be attained. That alone destroys illusions down to the root so that pure love of God may flourish. And then he quotes one verse, which is well known to you. He says, it's from 1 to 21. Thus the knot in the heart is pierced and all misgivings are cut to pieces. The chain of fruitive action is terminated when one sees the Lord as master. For sadhakas like us, seeing the Lord will mean 
to hear first of all about the Lord, like we heard so beautifully from Bhujan today. And this is the path, the path of hearing, where some impressions come in our heart. We may in our heart uh, understand what we have heard in one way, and that is the first seeing, some impressions. Or when we chant the holy name and we come from a superficial chanting into a deeper level of absorption, uh, and during this time we either look at the deities in front of us, or we close our eyes and pray to Krishna, Oh Krishna, please accept me. And there is a, a, a first, there is a, is a contact, you make a contact with Krishna. This is how the seeing uh, uh, is, is starting. But then after some time, when the devotee is matured, he sees them with his very eyes. And Rupa Goswami prays for that type of vision. And mm, I want to introduce to you mm, another great Vaishnava who mm, by his prayers gives us an answer should we want to see Krishna. Mm. And Giri, Giriyaj Maharaj <coughs> This is in his new book, uh, I'll Build You a Temple, The Juhu Story. Please excuse me, I just will. Giriyaj Maharaj describes in his book that once he had a appointment with a wealthy Gujarati businessman, Mr. Mehta, um, and uh, he was, this Mr. Mehta was a devotee in the Vallabha Sampradaya and uh, he told Giraj Maharaj that in the Vallabha Sampradaya they consider um, the prayers of Vrita Sura in the sixth uh, canto, eleventh chapter to be the essence of their philosophy. And Mr. Meta read these verses these two, four prayers of Vrita Sura to Giriyar, Giriyaj Maharaj. And for Giriyaj Maharaj, they sounded so, so precisely, exactly, so, so much in the tune with um, Chaitanya Bhakti, with what he had learned from Prabhupada, that he, when he came back from Mr. Meta, he burst into the room of uh, Prabhupada and asked him, Prabhupada, I'm sorry to disturb him. Prabhupada was just doing something. He looked up, so, and he saw that his disciple was really moved and churned in his heart. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and he told him that Mr. Meta had said, these verses are core verses. So Prabhupada, motioned to the sixth canto, which was there in the bookshelf, and asked Giraj Maharaj to take the, this book out and read the verses. Giraj Maharaj said, with Sanskrit and, 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 and Purpani? Yes, said Prabhupada. So then he read from chapter 11, verses 24 to 27. This is something you would like to note, uh, th this part in the Bhagavatam. Mm, uh, the first prayer. The, you must know the circumstances. Vritasura uh, was in his heart a great devotee with spiritual desires and aspirations, but he was in a body which forced him to act in a different way, uh, in a way of an asura. Um, asuras are defined as persons who are interested in their own sense gratification. Uh, I always like to say I'm in the same situation. I'm 
born in the body of uh, of a North German person. I have um, the pride of a North German in me, uh, and uh, I am, have this quali disqualification and that disqualification, but I desire bhakti now. So Vritasura was in an armed conflict with Indra and uh, all the devatas, mm, like a demon will attack, an asura will attack the suras. But in the fight, he, his devotional tendencies burst forth and he did not want to live any longer as an uh, asura. He didn't want to pursue his material life any longer. And he wanted to give up his body. A little bit like Sanatan Goswami, who came with these uh, sores, which were, uh, where pus came out, and he said, I don't want to stay in this body any longer. It's useless for service. So Vritasura saw Indra, who could have ended his life, but he, he, uh, he said to himself, this is Vishwanath Shakavati Thakur, what will this rascal Indra do? He sees everything materially. Uh, he will not kill me and l liberate me from this body. Instead, I will now to the, turn to the lotus feet of the Lord directly. So at that time, the Lord appeared as a spurti inside his heart in his meditation and said, very soon I will bring you to my side. Please ask for a boon. And then Vritasura felt encouraged and he uh, sang this beautiful uh, verse. Aham haritava padaika mula dasanudaso bhavitas mi bhuya manas maritasu patergunang ste Grinita Vakama Karotikaya. O oh my Lord, O oh Supreme Personality of Godhead, will I be again able to be a servant of your servants who find shelter? only in the dust of your lotus feet? O Lord of my life, may I again become their servant so that my mind may always think of your transcendental attributes, my speech and words, may always glorify these qualities of yours and my body may always engage in the loving service of your Lordship. So Viriyaj Maharaj was reading this and Prabhupada urged him on to read in the purport and, Prabhupada and, and the first line gave an answer to Giriyaj's Maharaj's question, is this, uh, the Vallabhas consider this the essence of the philosophy. How do we deal with this? And uh, in the purport Prabhupada says, this verse, this very verse, gives the sum and substance of devotional life. It's the sum and substance. Sum means the summary of everything and the substance it means this is essential, this is true, this is real. Mm, it gives the, this is authentic devotional life. Mm, uh, uh, in this verse again I want to say in my own words he, uh, mm, uh, the devotee prays to the Lord to be again allowed to be the servant of the servant and engage 
That's a, so he wants to be allowed to be in the association of the direct associates of Krishna. And then he wants to engage his uh, three attributes, the, the mind, the words, and the body in service. Mm. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, examined Parikshate uh, Sanatanga Swami, the Lord will now examine Vritasura. Is this so? Uh, uh, do you actually want this? Uh, uh, this is all Vishwana Chakravati Thakui. He will say, no, 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 I will give you everything else including uh, enjoyment of Svaga, or heavenly planets and liberations. Please take everything from me. But Vritasura shakes his head and emphatically refuses, no, no, no. <laughs> In separation from you, my life as a burning. How then will Svaga, paradise in heaven, make me happy? But when I meet you, I will attain the three blessings. That is, that my mind is engaged in your service always. Mm. Uh, uh, Lord of my life, my words sing your qualities. And my body is engaged in massaging your lotus feet and other personal services. My dear devotees, these are the true aspirations of the soul. This is what every one of us uh, uh, wants because we have a soul. Or not we have a soul. We are a soul and we have the body. Sometimes we think we, we are a German and we have a soul somewhere inside. No, I am a soul and I have a German, <laughs> so to say. That is the, the right way of seeing things. And therefore I have soul desires, the desires of the soul, but they are covered by layers and layers and layers of material conditionings. Um, uh, which all come out of the false ego of identifying with something that I am not. It's, it's the not in the heart. No, It's a very strong bondage. Mm. So mm, therefore here our mm, uh, uh, devotee Vritta, Vritta is, consider, is con uh, continuing. Oh my Lord, source of all opportunities means you can have everything from the Lord. Oh my Lord, source of all opportunities, I do not desire to enjoy in Dhruva Loka. I do not wish to be in the heavenly planets or the planet where Lord Brahma resides. No. Nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I do not desire to be the master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. Three times he says, no, I don't want the higher planets I don't wish the powers of the yogis. I don't wish moksha if I have to give up serving your lotus feet. Mm. And then he thinks, I need to most probably make myself a little bit more clearer and tell the Lord about all my desires mm. uh, and what I strongly a wish for. But I also know that the fulfillment of my desires depends solely and entirely on you, Krishna. He sings, Aja Aja Tapaksha 
iva mataram kaga stanyam yatavat satada shudhata priyam priyeva yushitam vishanna mano ravindaksha tidikshate tam tvam he says uh, let me describe what is going on in my heart and he gives three analogy analogies just like baby birds who sit in the nest and wait for the mother to come and bring food and security to them i long for you uh, just like a, a small calf that is tied by the neck with the ropes and waits the, for the time when he can go to the mother and drink in the same way i want to be allowed uh, uh, to come to you my lord then he feels in his heart no these are examples are not good because in these examples both the bird and the calf thinks of his own enjoyment only but this is not how i really feel and he gives a third example he says to really express what is going on in my heart this third example please listen to it just like a wife who sits at home and is sad because her beloved husband is in foreign countries and is not there uh, i also wish for you to to come so that i can serve you in all ways the the beloved wife for instance who sits at home will think oh when my husband comes i will make his favorite porridge for him um or 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 his and i will certainly also um you know uh, make the room very tidy so that he can very uh, nicely sit down and i will even and then she thinks of the private thoughts of a wife which enter into the very confidential relationship i will give him pleasure in various ways no so so in this way i feel also i want don't want to just see you i want to serve you uh, that is my great uh, desire and then he ends his prayer uh, mm, uh because you must see in his psychology something happens that has happened also in rupa goswami he thinks oh how can can such a low rascal as my self attain such a good fortune that i i i want to go back to god had let me remain for some time in this world but not uh, an ordinary stay in this world no let me have friendship with the devotees of the lord not to persons who are attached to their bodies and so on and therefore he ends his prayer he by saying mama tama shloka janeshu sakyam oh my lord my master i'm i'm wandering through the material world i know as a result of my karma let that go on uh therefore as i'm still roaming in the world uh i seek friendship in the association of your pious and enlightened devotees my attachment to my body wife children and home is continuing by the spell of the external energy but i wish to be attached to them no longer let my mind my consciousness and everything i have be attached only to you my dear listeners i think when we speak about a subject like this one uh developing divine aspirations we first of all 
need to understand what they are. What are the desires of the soul? And therefore, coming in contact with Rupa Goswami's enlightened poesy, poetry, um, is informing us about this. And we may also feel at that time, yes, he, he is there like a beggar in the forest of Vrindavan. He feels deeply unqualified, but he wants to have a spurti. It means something which he realizes for kshanam. Kshanam is the word which Rupa Goswami uses. Kshanam heißt, uh, means <laughs> a moment. He wants to see for a moment an impression of Radha and Krishna. Uh, the image which he has given is uh, like a lightning flash that comes out of a dark rain uh, cloud. I want to see for a moment, if only for a moment, your kind uh, 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 presence in my heart. And his desire is to do service. Now, to approach this unearthing of our own desires, we need to do a little spiritual archaeology. And I believe in Vritasura's prayers, which are the sum and substance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, uh, we find a clue. And this clue is to be in the association of devotees like now. Uh, I mean, I, I will take myself out of this, but when I listened to Burijan Prabhu this morning, I just felt, wow, now my world is in order. Yes, and I uh, followed his line of explanations. I was there with Sanatan Goswami. I could feel his desperation upon seeing his own so-called disqualification. In, in his case, it's only a so-called disqualification. Mm, and uh, I could follow that the Lord uh, examines us. My dear devotees, in your life, you all have Goparaj. I, I should not point with my index finger at him. Looking at you, like here in this, this uh, background, he looks at you uh, uh, and uh, he is uh, 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 watching you. He is doing some, what was the, the word? Parikshyate. He uh, is uh, examining you. Uh, he is looking that in your heart these divine aspirations, these aspirations which come from the long neglected soul, <laughs> that they will arise and he will respond. Ye yatamang papatyante, the degree in which you are turning to him. I thank you very much. I am uh, finished here. I am uh, uh, somehow very punctual. Uh, Prashanta, you should have a word of encouragement for me. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, what do we do, Prashanta? Do we ask for a question or do we go, go on? Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my respectful obeisances on glorious Shishra Prabhupada. Thank you so much for bringing this very wonderful topic uh, and helping us to introspect. So, Maharaj, one question I had come across in this uh, context was that when we go in temple and have darshan of the Lord, we feel very much uh, satisfied, happy, and very closer to Krishna. But when we come back, when we are at our home, when we worship in our altar, the same feeling is not there. So uh, I feel very indifferent that Krishna is a person, still why so much impersonalism is there. Although so many processes of chanting, hearing, reading is going on, but why this impersonalism persists in the heart when Krishna is the same? 
in the photo and when we go to the temple thank you very much uh, thank you very much uh, i think it's a relevant question which many of us uh, have yes when we are go going to the temple there are moments when we have really when we almost feel a communication between us and the deities and and devotees have uh, spoken about this that they may have had a question and a desire and at that moment mm, a flower falls from the garland and seems to confirm a question which they have given answer to a question why don't we feel like this uh, at home when we have maybe home deities or pictures of the deities mm. uh, see uh, uh, I will expand your question also we, on retreats and seminars we are in good high elevated consciousness but when we come back to our lives mm, it seems we almost lose uh, if not everything we lose a lot mm, why is this so and what can we do you must know one thing if you want to do something like being Krishna conscious if you want to be something you have to create the circumstances that allow this for instance if you want to rise in the early morning to do your sadhana you have to and, and, to, and to do not a sleepy sadhana but to be awake you have to create the circumstances of going early to, uh, to bed. You can't, uh, in other words, perform in your life uh, or do anything in your life or be anything in your life if you do not create the circumstances that allow you to do this. So very often when we come into the temple or if we come in a festival, we come into circumstances or an environment or you could also say an atmosphere that supports us from all directions. Uh, um, you know, there are devotees, there's prasharam, there are kirtans, there are the deities and yes, then uh, we can be very Krishna conscious. Mm, the art is if you want to maintain this state of consciousness you will have to somehow bring these or similar circumstances that support you into your life. If I want to be healthy I have to have a, a good healthy diet, I have to have good air to breathe, I have to have maybe exercises and so on and so forth. Otherwise I cannot be healthy. I can maybe have a momentary feeling of being healthy of when I feel good and uh, there's good circulation going on but that's momentary. So you, we need to look at the circumstances that surround us mm, and uh, create circumstances. I always think of three circumstances that help uh, us when we are uh, at home. One is a favorable lifestyle. The second is uh, philosophy where we read regularly. The third is a, a practice and oh, I forgot the fourth is um, we need some form of Sangha in some ways. We can take in this lockdown times online Sangha or listen to lectures um, and so on and and or you are a Mataji, you can phone other Matajis and discuss with, with them and so on. Some type of Sangha we need. So 
my answer to you is you have to create the circumstances that are favorable and then only when the circumstances are favorable will it be possible for you to maintain your spiritual life enthusiastically. My dear devotees, I see that there are still other hands up and you want to ask questions. Now for a lecturer there is no greater joy than <laughs> an interested audience. But I sincerely think in the interest of time that we don't lose uh, those devotees who have uh, made uh, plans for the rest of the day. We should end here. We are only eight minutes too late. That's still within the acceptable borders. And uh, please keep your questions. Uh, we will have a question and answer session with Bhujan Prabhu, Jagatarini, Mataji, and myself um, on. Uh, uh, please help me, Prashanta. Is it Sunday, isn't it? It's on the last day, Marisha, last day on yeah. the 9th of January. So, yes, we can we can invite the devotees that if, if some of your questions are not being answered now, you just keep them and uh, we will open uh, the uh, chat for questions. Uh, not today, I think day after tomorrow, we will be opening, uh, we will be collecting questions. So if you don't get through during the classes, which is natural, um, we will, uh, we will, you will have another opportunity to have your questions heard. Yes, so please remember what Prashanta said. You type your question in into the chat box, send it, uh, oh, I'm not so, so computer scientist, but then Prashanta will get it and her team and they will take it out, take it out, but oh, somehow, somehow. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Good, so I, I will close here, I will close my shop here, but I will continue to be at the um, retreat. Now we will, uh, Prashanta will announce the next video and then Jagatarini Mataji will speak.